Welcome to a journey through the life of a legend whose footsteps echo through the corridors of dance and cinema history. Today, we're unraveling the story of Gene Kelly, a man whose talent stormed the heavens of Hollywood and forever changed how we see dance on screen. From the streets of Pittsburgh to the glitz of Tinseltown, we delve into the life, love, legacy, and the deeply personal story behind the death of a star whose light refuses to fade. Join us as we uncover the truth behind Gene Kelly's death, a revelation that might just take your breath away. Early Life and Background Gene Kelly, a name that resonates through the halls of dance and cinema, was born Eugene Curran Kelly on August 23, 1912, in the vibrant city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. His entry into the world coincided with a period of significant cultural and socioeconomic shifts in America, setting the stage for a life marked by extraordinary talent and groundbreaking achievements. Raised in a working-class neighborhood, Kelly's early years were rooted in the tight-knit community of Pittsburgh's East Liberty District. The Kelly household was buzzing with energy, music, and a deep appreciation for the arts, thanks to his parents, James and Harriet Catherine Curran Kelly. Despite the economic challenges of the time, including the formidable shadow of the Great Depression, the Kelly family remained staunch advocates for the value of artistic expression. From a young age, Gene displayed a natural athleticism and an enthusiastic interest in sports. He dreamt of playing for the Pittsburgh Pirates, embodying the city's robust spirit and its passion for baseball. However, life had a different rhythm in store for him. At the tender age of eight, Gene's mother enrolled him in dance classes, a decision that was met with reluctance by young Kelly. The notion of dance, particularly for a boy in the early 20th century, was fraught with stereotypes and societal expectations. Yet it was in these early dance classes that Gene began to glimpse the potential of movement and expression, setting him on a path far removed from the baseball diamond. Kelly's journey through education was a testament to his versatile interests and his relentless pursuit of knowledge. After graduating from Peabody High School in 1929, he aspired to study journalism at Pennsylvania State College. Financial difficulties, however, steered him toward the University of Pittsburgh, where he majored in economics. It was here, amidst the scholarly pursuit of economics, that Gene found himself irresistibly drawn back to the performing arts. He became involved with the Cap and Gown Club, a university group dedicated to theater, allowing him to merge his academic endeavors with his burgeoning passion for performance. Despite the economic constraints and societal norms of the time, Gene Kelly's transition from sports to performing arts was a bold statement of his dedication to his true calling. He was not content with merely embracing dance as a hobby or a secondary interest. Instead, he sought to delve deeper into the craft, exploring its nuances and potential for storytelling. This resolve led him to make a pivotal decision that would define the course of his career, to pursue dance over other career paths. In 1934, amidst his law studies at the University of Pittsburgh, Gene made the courageous choice to drop out and focus on his passion for dance and choreography. This decision was not made lightly, considering the societal expectations and economic pressures of the era. However, Gene's unwavering commitment to his art propelled him forward. In 1937, he took a significant leap of faith by moving to New York City, the epicenter of American theater and dance, in search of opportunities to hone his craft and make his mark on the stage. The early rejection and struggles he faced in New York only fueled his determination. Returning to Pittsburgh, Gene didn't see this setback as a defeat, but rather as an opportunity to refine his skills and vision. He took on the role of choreographer for the musical Hold Your Hats, at the Pittsburgh Playhouse in 1938, a move that began to solidify his reputation as a gifted dancer and innovative choreographer. His Broadway debut in Leave It To Me and his performance in The Time of Your Life further established Gene Kelly as a formidable talent in the performing arts. Initial Struggles and Broadway Breakthrough In the heart of the 1930s, Gene Kelly's journey from Pittsburgh to New York City marked the beginning of a new chapter one filled with aspirations and daunting challenges. 
initial struggles, and Broadway breakthrough. In the heart of the 1930s, Gene Kelly's journey from Pittsburgh to New York City marked the beginning of a new chapter, one filled with aspirations and daunting challenges. New York, the city that never sleeps, was the ultimate battleground for artists seeking to etch their names in the annals of performance history. Gene, with dreams larger than life itself, found himself amidst the tumult, ready to dance his way through the barriers. Gene's arrival in New York wasn't met with instant applause or standing ovations. The reality was starkly different, a series of rejections that would dishearten the strongest of spirits. The city's vibrant theater scene was as unforgiving as it was promising. For every star that shone on Broadway, countless others languished in obscurity. Gene Kelly, however, was not one to be easily dissuaded. The struggle was real. He worked odd jobs to make ends meet, never letting go of the dream that brought him to the city's bustling streets. His unique blend of athletic prowess and graceful dance was a novelty waiting to be discovered. But Broadway was slow to recognize the gem in its midst. Then came Pal Joey. This Broadway production, a turning point in Gene's career, introduced audiences to his dynamic presence and innovative dance style. As Joey Evans, the charismatic but morally ambiguous lead, Gene brought a complexity to the character that was both engaging and electric. His performance was a revelation, blending acting and dance in a manner seldom seen on the Broadway stage. Critics and audiences alike took notice, and Gene Kelly's star began to rise. Pal Joey was more than a successful show. It was a showcase of Gene's immense talent and a glimpse into the future of musical theater. His ability to convey emotion through dance, to tell a story with every move, set him apart from his contemporaries. Broadway had seen nothing like it, and Hollywood was paying attention. European influence and artistic development. Before he became a Hollywood icon, Kelly sought inspiration and knowledge across the Atlantic. His travels to Europe were more than mere excursions. They were a quest for the essence of dance. In the heart of the continent, Kelly immersed himself in ballet and modern dance techniques, studying the works of European choreographers and dancers who had mastered the art long before him. Europe, with its deep-rooted dance traditions, offered Kelly a new lens through which to view his craft. Ballet's discipline and elegance, combined with the expressive freedom of modern dance, influenced Kelly to blend these techniques, forging a distinctive style that bridged classical and contemporary dance forms. The influence of European choreographers, such as the innovative Sergei Diaghilev and the expressive Jean Cocteau, was profound. Kelly admired their ability to tell stories through movement, a principle he was eager to transplant into the American musical. This admiration wasn't just passive. Kelly actively incorporated elements of their work into his own, aspiring to achieve a cinematic dance language that was as rich in narrative as it was in technique. Back in Hollywood, the European influence was palpable in Kelly's creations. His groundbreaking film, An American in Paris, is a testament to this fusion of worlds. The ballet sequence, inspired by his European sojourns, was revolutionary showcasing a narrative-driven dance that captivated audiences and critics alike. It was here that Kelly's vision of integrating ballet's storytelling with the vibrancy of modern dance truly came to life, setting a new standard for what musical films could achieve. Kelly's European experiences set him apart from his contemporaries. While others focused on the spectacle, Kelly pursued a deeper integration of dance and narrative, echoing the European tradition of ballet and theater. His insistence on dance serving the story, rather than merely decorating it, challenged Hollywood norms and enriched the musical genre with a depth previously unseen. In works such as Singin' in the Rain and Brigadoon, Kelly's European influence is unmistakable. His choreography, imbued with the precision of ballet and the emotive power of modern dance, transformed these films into cinematic masterpieces. Kelly's unique approach not only entertained but also elevated the art of dance in film, blending technique with emotion in a way that resonated with audiences worldwide. Gene Kelly's artistic journey was a bridge between continents, between classical and modern, and between dance and narrative. His travels in Europe were not merely a chapter in his life, but a transformation that redefined his work, and indeed, the musical film genre. Hollywood success and innovation. 
The journey from Broadway to the shimmering allure of Hollywood is a path tread by many, yet few have left indelible marks as profound as Gene Kelly. After his breakthrough role in Pal Joey, Kelly's undeniable talent caught the discerning eyes of Hollywood scouts. It wasn't long before he ventured westward, stepping into the vast, dream-laden expanse of the film industry in the early 1940s. This pivotal transition was underscored by his signing with the cinematic powerhouse Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer MGM, a studio synonymous with the golden age of Hollywood. MGM was not just any studio, it was the epitome of movie magic, home to the biggest stars and grandest productions of the era. For Kelly, MGM offered a canvas vast enough to accommodate his grand visions, and a platform to reach an audience far beyond the confines of Broadway's stages. His collaboration with MGM was poised to be revolutionary, blending his fresh, athletic approach to dance with the studio's lavish production values and technical prowess. This partnership between Kelly and MGM was a meeting of minds and talents, setting the stage for a series of cinematic innovations that would forever change the landscape of movie musicals. Gene Kelly's foray into Hollywood was met with immediate success, debuting alongside Judy Garland in For Me and My Gal, 1942. The film, which chronicled the ups and downs of a vaudeville couple aspiring for Broadway fame, not only highlighted Kelly's acting chops, but also showcased his innovative dance sequences, signaling the emergence of a new kind of male lead in musicals, athletic, charismatic, and profoundly talented in dance. But it was Anchors Away, 1945, that truly showcased Kelly's pioneering spirit. In this film, Kelly danced alongside the animated character Jerry Mouse, a technical marvel of its time. This sequence was not just a dance number, it was a groundbreaking blend of live action and animation, achieved through painstaking frame-by-frame -frame animation synchronized with Kelly's precise movements. It demonstrated Kelly's willingness to experiment and push technological boundaries, marrying his artistic vision with the latest in movie-making techniques. Kelly's ambition and creative genius were further evidenced in On the Town, 1949, a film that broke new ground by taking musicals out of the soundstage and onto the streets. Co-directed by Kelly and Stanley Donen, this exuberant celebration of New York City was among the first musicals to be shot on location. The film was a vibrant love letter to the city, capturing its energy and rhythm through the adventures of three sailors on leave. On the Town not only expanded the visual and thematic possibilities of the musical genre, but also solidified Kelly's reputation as an innovator who could blend spectacular dance sequences with compelling storytelling. Gene Kelly's vision extended beyond mere performance, he was determined to integrate ballet and narrative storytelling into movies, pushing the boundaries of what dance could convey on screen. His work in An American in Paris, 1951, exemplified this, with the film's extended ballet sequence, inspired by French Impressionist art, setting a new standard for musicals. Kelly's innovative use of camera movements, lighting and set design, in collaboration with the brilliant minds at MGM, created a cinematic ballet that was both a visual and emotional masterpiece. The pinnacle of Kelly's career came with Singin' in the Rain, 1952, a film that not only showcased his talents as a dancer, actor, and choreographer, but also as a visionary director. The film's iconic title sequence, with Kelly joyously dancing in the rain, became one of the most enduring images in film history. Yet, it was his ability to tell a compelling story through dance, using it as a vehicle for narrative and character development, that truly set the film apart. Singin' in the Rain served as a blueprint for future musicals, demonstrating how dance sequences could be seamlessly integrated into the plot, enhancing the storytelling rather than pausing it. Kelly's insistence on realism, even within the fantastical framework of musicals, influenced generations of filmmakers and choreographers, who saw in his work the potential for dance to express complex emotions and narratives. Gene Kelly's contributions to Hollywood and the musical genre were profound. By incorporating ballet and modern dance into films, Kelly elevated the musical, transforming it from entertainment to art. His emphasis on story-driven dance sequences challenged the conventions of the time, encouraging a more holistic approach to filmmaking where dance, music, and narrative work in harmony. Kelly's legacy is not just in the films he made,
but in the path he paved for future artists. His innovations in choreography and direction continue to inspire filmmakers and dancers, ensuring that his influence will be felt for generations to come. Personal Life and Relationships Gene Kelly's personal life was marked by three significant marriages, each reflecting a different phase of his life and career. His first wife, Betsy Blair, was an actress and a dancer. They married in 1941, during the early days of Kelly's career in Hollywood. Together, they had one daughter, Carrie. Blair was not only a partner to Kelly, but also a confidant and supporter of his ambitions. Their marriage, however, faced strains as Kelly's career ascended, leading to their divorce in 1957. This period was marked by Kelly's rigorous work schedule and the pressures of Hollywood, which inevitably took a toll on their relationship. In 1960, Kelly found love again with Jean Coyne, who was a dancer and choreographer. Coyne had worked with Kelly on various projects, and their shared passion for dance deepened their connection. They had two children together, Bridget and Timothy. This marriage brought a period of stability and happiness to Kelly's life, though it was tragically cut short by Coyne's death in 1973. Coyne's influence on Kelly was profound, both personally and professionally, as she contributed significantly to his work, sharing in his creative process and vision. Kelly's third and final marriage was to Patricia Ward in 1990. Ward was considerably younger than Kelly, but their bond was rooted in a deep respect and love for one another. Patricia stood by Kelly, especially during his later years as he faced health challenges, providing him with support and companionship until his death in 1996. Gene Kelly's relationships within the Hollywood industry were multifaceted, influencing his work and shaping his public image. Kelly was known for his collaborations with some of the biggest names in Hollywood, including Judy Garland, Frank Sinatra, and Debbie Reynolds. His rapport with these stars was not just professional but deeply personal, contributing to the chemistry seen on screen. Kelly's partnership with Stanley Donen was particularly notable, leading to the creation of some of the most iconic films in Hollywood history. However, Kelly was also known for his exacting standards and demanding nature, which sometimes led to tensions with his co-stars and collaborators. Despite this, many of those who worked with Kelly spoke of the immense respect they had for his talent and vision, acknowledging that his drive for perfection often brought out the best in them. Kelly's personal life and relationships had a profound impact on his work and public image. His marriages and family life offered him stability and inspiration, which he translated into his art. The joy, heartbreak, and complexity of his personal experiences enriched his performances, making them resonate with audiences on a deeper level. Kelly's relationships within the industry, characterized by both collaboration and conflict, contributed to his reputation as a brilliant yet demanding artist. His ability to maintain friendships with many of his co-stars, despite the pressures of work, spoke volumes about his character and charisma. Challenges and Controversies Gene Kelly's journey in Hollywood wasn't always a smooth sail. Despite his groundbreaking talent, Kelly often found himself at odds with studio executives who were hesitant to embrace his innovative ideas. His vision for integrating ballet into mainstream cinema and experimenting with film techniques was initially met with skepticism. Kelly's determination to film On the Town on location in New York City clashed with MGM's traditional in-studio production method, marking one of the many battles he fought for creative control. Moreover, Kelly's directorial ventures weren't always well-received by critics. Films like Invitation to the Dance were ambitious, but ultimately fell short of commercial expectations, challenging Kelly's reputation and forcing him to prove his mettle time and again. Off the screen, Kelly's personal life bore its share of struggles. His first marriage to actress Betsy Blair encountered strains as Kelly's dedication to his career often meant long hours away from home, contributing to their eventual separation. His second marriage to Jean Coyne was shadowed by her illness and premature death, events that deeply affected Kelly, casting a long shadow over his personal happiness. Kelly also navigated the complexities of the Hollywood blacklist era. His wife Betsy Blair's alleged communist sympathies put Kelly in a precarious position, threatening his career during one of America's most politically paranoid times. 
Balancing between his personal beliefs and the risk of professional ostracism was a tightrope walk that Kelly managed with careful discretion. Kelly's career wasn't devoid of controversies. His push for creative autonomy sometimes led to friction with co-stars and crew members. Reports of Kelly being demanding and a perfectionist were contrasted with his genial public image, revealing the intense pressure he placed on both himself and those around him to achieve cinematic brilliance. Notably, during the production of Singin' in the Rain, Kelly's insistence on perfection led to a demanding filming schedule, particularly for the iconic title sequence, which was physically taxing for Kelly and co-star Debbie Reynolds. While these moments cemented Kelly's legacy, they also painted a picture of a man whose artistic drive knew no bounds, at times at the cost of personal relationships and well-being. These challenges and controversies shaped Kelly's career and public image in complex ways. While they underscored his unwavering commitment to his craft, they also revealed the personal costs of such dedication. Kelly's ability to navigate these tumultuous waters without compromising his artistic integrity endeared him to generations, illustrating the resilience and passion that defined his life and career. Later, career and television work. In the twilight of the classical Hollywood musical era, Gene Kelly gracefully moved into television and theater, showcasing the adaptability that had characterized his entire career. With the silver screen spotlight dimming, Kelly embraced television, a medium burgeoning with potential and reach. His television debut, The Gene Kelly Show, aired in 1959, was a dazzling showcase that captured the essence of his genius in a format accessible to the American living room. This wasn't merely a shift in medium, it was Kelly's statement that the magic of dance and storytelling could thrive beyond the cinema's grandeur. Kelly's endeavors in television were diverse, ranging from captivating performances to roles behind the scenes as director and producer. Among his notable contributions was Jack and the Beanstalk, in 1967, a television special that not only won him an Emmy Award for Outstanding Children's Program, but also demonstrated his innovative spirit by blending animation with live action, a testament to his creative ingenuity. Moreover, Kelly's passion for dance and theater saw him returning to the stage, directing and choreographing productions that benefited from his vast experience and visionary approach. His directorial prowess was evident in the revival of the musical Flower Drum Song in 1965, showcasing his ability to breathe new life into established works. Kelly's commitment to the performing arts was undiminished by the years, continually seeking ways to enrich and expand its boundaries. The latter part of Kelly's career was marked by significant projects that underscored his legacy as a trailblazer. Notably, his involvement in the documentary That's Dancing, in 1985, served as a reflective journey through the evolution of dance in cinema. Kelly, serving as executive producer and co-host, offered insights only someone of his caliber could provide, bridging the past with the present and celebrating the art form that defined his life. Kelly's journey into television allowed him to reach a broader audience, not just as a performer, but as a teacher and mentor. His work on various TV specials and shows wasn't merely about showcasing his talent, but sharing his deep understanding of dance and performance. Kelly believed in the power of dance to tell stories, a philosophy he eagerly passed on to those he worked with. One of Kelly's significant contributions to television was his involvement in Gene Kelly, an American in Pasadena, in 1978. This special was more than a display of his legendary dance skills. It was an opportunity for Kelly to teach and inspire. He meticulously crafted performances that highlighted the versatility and emotional depth of dance, serving as a masterclass for aspiring performers. Kelly's influence extended beyond the set. He was known for his generosity in sharing knowledge with younger dancers and actors, often offering advice and encouragement. His commitment to mentoring was rooted in a genuine desire to see others succeed knowing that the future of dance and cinema depended on the passion and talent of the next generation. Awards, recognition, and honors. Gene Kelly's journey to becoming an icon was marked by several prestigious awards. His ability to blend storytelling with dance revolutionized the musical film genre, earning him widespread acclaim. 
Perhaps one of the most significant recognitions of his talent came in 1952 with the film Singin' in the Rain. Though surprisingly not nominated for an Academy Award for this film, Kelly's performance and choreography in Singin' in the Rain remain one of the most celebrated contributions to cinema history. However, Kelly's talents did not go unrecognized by the Academy. In 1946, he received an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor for his role in Anchors Away. Beyond nominations, Kelly was honored with an Honorary Academy Award in 1952, acknowledging his versatility as an actor, singer, director, and dancer, particularly for his brilliant achievements in the art of choreography on film. Kelly's influence extended far beyond the silver screen. In 1985, he was awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award from the American Film Institute, a testament to his enduring impact on the film industry. His contributions were also recognized outside the realm of cinema. In 1982, Kelly was honored with the Kennedy Center Honors, celebrating his lifetime contributions to American culture through the performing arts. But perhaps one of the most heartfelt recognitions came later in his life. In 1994, President Bill Clinton awarded Gene Kelly the National Medal of Arts. This honor, the highest awarded to artists and arts patrons by the United States government, was a fitting tribute to Kelly's significant contributions to the arts and his role in shaping American entertainment. Throughout his career, Gene Kelly also received numerous other awards and accolades. He was celebrated with Emmy Awards for his televised dance performances and specials, showcasing his ability to adapt his talents to new mediums and continue influencing the arts beyond the confines of film. Kelly's legacy is not just in the awards he won, but in the recognition he received for opening new pathways in dance and cinema. Gene Kelly Health, Death, and Legacy. Gene Kelly, whose life was as vibrant as his performances, faced significant health challenges in his later years. Despite these obstacles, he remained a figure of resilience and grace. Kelly's health began to decline in the early 1990s, with strokes in 1994 and 1995 significantly impacting his mobility and quality of life. These health issues led to a decrease in public appearances. Yet, when he did appear, he was met with the same warmth and admiration that had greeted him at the height of his career. Kelly's spirit, undimmed by his physical struggles, continued to inspire those around him. Gene Kelly passed away in his sleep on February 2, 1996, at the age of 83. The cause of death was complications arising from two strokes he had suffered the previous years. His passing marked the end of an era for Hollywood musicals and dance. Kelly's family, respecting his wishes for privacy and simplicity, held no public funeral. Instead, the world mourned the loss of a cinematic legend in their own ways, through tributes and retrospectives that celebrated his vast contributions to the arts. Kelly's legacy is as multifaceted as his talents. He was not just a dancer, but a revolutionary who transformed the film musical by integrating ballet with modern dance, thereby changing how dance was perceived in Hollywood and beyond. His iconic routine in Singin' in the Rain remains one of the most celebrated dance sequences in film history, a testament to his genius in blending technical prowess with expressive joy. Kelly's influence extends beyond the steps he choreographed or the characters he portrayed, he redefined the male dancer's image, combining athleticism with artistry in a way that broke free from previous stereotypes. His work insisted that dance could tell a story just as powerfully as words, paving the way for future generations of dancers and choreographers, from Mikhail Baryshnikov to Justin Peck, to explore narrative through movement. Moreover, Kelly's legacy lives on through the institutions that continue to celebrate his work. The American Film Institute, which honored him with a Lifetime Achievement Award in 1985, and the countless dance schools and film studies programs that study his techniques ensure that his contributions to dance and film are taught and appreciated by new audiences. Gene Kelly's impact on popular culture cannot be overstated. From inspiring the choreography of music videos to influencing the modern musical theater landscape, his creative spirit continues to resonate. Kelly showed that at the heart of every performance, whether on stage or screen, lies the power to evoke emotion, tell stories, and connect with audiences across time. 
Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.